Hello, this is Jason Payne for Coal Banker Dean Harper Realtors, and welcome to my little podcast thing that I got going. My guest today is going to be Chris Kerr with Legacy Mutual, and uh, he is one of our preferred lenders. Actually, he's Coal Banker Dean Harper's preferred lender, and quite a few preferred lenders for a lot of builders. And Legacy and Chris has a wonderful reputation in this area. Um, and you really want a lender that you can trust because there are going to be hiccups in the process and you really want a lender that can solve those problems in-house versus what I like to call assembly line lending. Uh, so when I thought about who do I want as my first guest, Chris Kerr was a no-brainer. So with that, Chris, do you mind introducing yourself and uh, tell us a little about Legacy Mutual Lending? Uh, you bet. So I appreciate the opportunity to be here with you today. So growing up, my family had two different businesses. My mom owned an auto body shop and she also owned a ranch. We ran about 150 mama cows on a thousand acres. And so as a young man growing up, I had the opportunity to work in both of those businesses. Watched my mom through the auto body shop, take care of people who couldn't afford to get their cars fixed. You know, that's a traumatic experience. So I watched her help those individuals get their cars back on the road. Sometimes that meant waiving deductibles, paying deductibles, trading for services. On the ranching side, if you've ever been around animals, you know they tear <laughs> things up every yeah. day. And so I got the opportunity to fix those problems and find solutions with minimal amounts of information and or tools. And as a young man, didn't realize the importance of those things, but as a professional and today, what I have realized and see is two things that I do every day. One, to act as a, you know, with a servant heart, because we are in a taking care of people business. So that's super important for me. Mm -hmm. The second is I've become a great problem solver. Everybody's situation is different. Everybody's parameters are different. And so it's up to us to figure out how we help you, the buyer, figure out your buying power and what works for your budget. So those are a little bit about me and how I work personally. Legacy is a San Antonio based mortgage banker. So we've got branches in Texas, Colorado, Tennessee, and then we can originate in 21 states throughout the country. So we have a lot of reach if people are moving out of the area or if you're coming here to Texas, we can help you as well. So been around since 03 is when Legacy started here in San Antonio. So we are well established in this local market for sure. I definitely appreciate the insight. Like you said before, he has an amazing reputation and so does his company. Uh, if you've been considering buying a house, obviously you've been following the news about the interest rate heights that we've been seeing here. And yes, just the other day, we went up another three quarters of a point. So, Chris, what have you seen uh, these interest rates hike doing to our uh, our market? Well, you know, interesting. It's a big news week, as we've talked about today already. And so there's been lots of things happen as far as information go. You know, the Fed did come out yesterday and raise the federal funds rate by 75 basis points. Now, the federal funds rate is not what mortgages are based off of. So it's not a direct relationship, but it is an over time relationship. As money gets more expensive, interest rates in the 10 year bond normally go up. However, what we saw yesterday was the market already had that 75 basis points built into it. And so yeah. we actually saw rates or the 10 year bond, which is what mortgage rates are based on, come down yesterday. This morning, the news was the first reading of second quarter GDP, our gross domestic product. They were forecasting a positive number there, and it actually came in negative this morning. So that once again, normally, unfortunately, bad news <laughs> in the market is good news for rates. And so we yes. actually saw those trickle down a hair this morning again. So the 10 year is sitting at a level we haven't seen since early April. So it's actually brought that back down. But tomorrow we've got inflation coming out again, what's called PCE, personal consumption expenditure. And that is expected to rise. So if that is hotter or worse than expected, we'll see rates trickle back up a little bit. But they've been fairly steady up until this week over the last few weeks, um, which has been good as far as stability goes in our market. So 
forecast though, you know, long-term forecast this year is that the potential rates will continue to rise some because the Fed still is under some pressure to raise rates again in September at their next meeting. But when we look at longer term forecasts, and of course, I have no crystal ball, so I'm only <laughs> discussing what we hear from the economists in the news, is that long term, 12 to 18 months, we'll probably see rates come back down, which will open up a great opportunity for those individuals buying this year to refinance into a lower interest fixed rate mortgage next year. So that's the forecast. No, you know, there's no guarantees of that, but that is what the market is showing right now from an economic standpoint. Yeah. And I got a preference this as we are filming this, it is 28 July, 2022. So if you're watching this video sometime in 2023 and wondering what the hell you're talking about, <laughs> we're talking about what's going on real time right now as of the end of July, 2022. Buyers often reach out, oh, by the way, great information there. That's why I wanted to have you on. Um, well, buyers always come up to me when they reach out to me after watching my videos. And it's like, what is step one? Step one is always learning what your buying power is. And the best way to do that is to reach out to a lender, Chris with Legacy, and find out what first to get pre-qualified. And that's going to give you an idea of what type of house. And Chris is wonderful about coming up with a game plan. So Chris, do you mind walking us through what that pre-qual process looks like? You bet. So pre-qualification normally takes place one of three ways. One is either over the phone where you and I will visit and gather information. Um, and then we go in and look at that information as far as buying power goes. And I'll touch on what that looks like in a second. The second is you can do online if that's a preference for you. And the third is we can do in the office if you're here local. I've got an office in San Antonio and New Braunfels. So have opportunity to meet face to face. But typically that's a 10 to 15 minute conversation on the phone for that pre-qualification. And what we're looking for is your personal information, name, date of birth, social phone and email. We're looking for address where you've lived for the last two plus two years. We're looking at income, current, and what that looks like for the last two year history. What you've got saved as far as monies to go towards your cash to close. We look at whether you're a veteran or not so we can figure out what the best uh, loan type might be for you, any derogatory items on your credit, and then what your parameters are. So where are you looking to buy? Where's your ideal monthly payment? And where's your max monthly payment? So once I've got all of that information, it allows us to go in, we pull credit first, then we look at debt to income ratio, and then we put a plan together to see what your buying power is based upon those parameters, monthly payment, ideal and maximum, cash to close, so total money out of pocket. And then we give you that buying power to show you a few different options. And we use software to present that, um, that outlines four different options for you. So normally I'll give you where you wanna be ideally, where your max is, and then a couple in between that if we have some options. So that way when you're out shopping, you can figure out what the best option is. So pre-qual looks like that. We usually have those back same day. So you're not waiting a week to get that information. If you call me today, I will normally, unless you're self-employed and we're waiting on documents, <laughs> be able to get you that information today so that you can work with Jason to find your home and start looking at that information. Yeah, because you know, you're not going to be able to put an offer in on a house without submitting that pre-qual letter. So definitely reach out to Chris first, get get through that first hurdle. Um what have you seen that is usually the biggest disqualifier for people when they uh, start the qualification process? Well, I mean, usually credits first, right? Because we do every pre-qual or pre-approval, both start with credit. The difference between pre-qualification and pre-approval, pre-approval means I have documents to prove what you told me, okay? So normally credit is the first piece if we have some 
um, limiting factors that we look at. Now, I'm not a credit repair specialist. I do obviously <laughs> see credit every day. And so we do have the ability to help you with a plan to, if you need that, to get your credit up um, to a level that would allow you to purchase. So that's the first thing that usually comes. The second is debt to income ratio. So that is your monthly payments on your credit report in relation to your gross income. So there's ways to look at that as well. If it's too high, one may be a lower buying power or purchase price for the home. One could be you're paying off debt, right? Uh, you sell your car and it's not showing up on your credit reports yet. Things like that, that can work towards helping that debt to income ratio. So those are the two biggest factors that come into play. Gotcha. And people don't realize that, yes, during the process, there is going to be a pull on your credit. However, uh, a lot of people do shop around different lenders. So after you pull that first time credit for uh, the, getting a prequal, you have 30 days if you did want to shop around. And I've had a lot of people shop around a little bit. That's perfectly fine. Uh, Chris has incredibly competitive rates and uh Oftentimes, people will shop around a little bit and end up back with Chris anyways. Um, but that's because I, you really want people to feel comfortable they're getting a good deal, not just I'm not sending you someone just because we have a relationship with them. Um, right. Yeah, and rates are, rates are obviously a piece of the picture, right? But mm -hmm. fees are also a piece of the picture. Time to close, making sure you actually close because there are times in our market, if you don't close on time, you can lose your earnest money. So there's several factors that come into that decision. We always hope it's us, right? But there are several factors to look at um, when picking your lender. Yeah, there's there's one particular lender. I'm not going to name names, uh, but they, you know which one I'm talking about. I do. Um, they do not have a grip, grip reputation because they do have that uh, assembly line process. It's like, hey, we need this file and Susie's out of town on vacations, like, well, she'll get back to you in a couple of days. In this process, that's not an acceptable answer of, we'll get back to you in a couple of days. You need that belly button to push someone to solve that problem right then and there. And Legacy has a great reputation for doing that. Um, when uh, going through the underwriting process, um, I, I can be a little crass sometimes, but this is what I tell my clients. Uh, underwriting process is like getting a rectal exam. It is <laughs> uncomfortable. It is intrusive, but it's it's it needs to be done. So the more you relax, just let it happen. Get the lender the documentation they're required. Don't fight it, and the process will go smoother. Uh, can you go through not a whole big, long underwriting process thing, but just an overview of what that underwriting process looks like. You bet. So we talked about that prequal. So typically we will request documents three times throughout the loan. So the first time after we finish prequalification, I'm going to have you send in your documents. So those are going to be things like pay stubs, bank statements, W-2s, driver's license. And then depending upon every individual, there's a few other ones that might come into play there. So we're going to get those documents up front, move you to pre-approval, which helps strengthen your offer when you go to make one. Now, when you go under contract, at that point, depending upon how long it's been from contract to when we originally got the documents, we're going to update our documents a second time to make sure they're current. Typically, that's only the bank statements and pay stubs. You know, your W-2 hadn't expired normally. Um so we'll get that information. At that point, it goes to my processor who puts all those documents in specific buckets. And then she's going to submit it to underwriting, which was your question. The underwriter's job is to go through, look at the documents, look at the loan parameters, and make sure that per regulation, you qualify for that loan. So what's going to happen is that loan's going to come back from underwriting, what we call conditionally approved. So the underwriter is going to look at it and overall say, hey, we like the file overall due to the regulations. However, we need an updated pay stub. We need to show the earnest money's cleared the bank. We need your tax return signed. Things like that. Your driver's license expired, right? I've got one of those right now. So <laughs> there are those things that come back. 
And that's going to be the third time that we ask for documents. And so my processor is going to reach out, ask for those updated documents. Then once we've got the appraisal and all the title work in, going to resubmit for final approval back to underwriting, which is where they go through, they check all those off that those have been satisfied and we get final approval, then clear to close. And then you go get to do a hand workout, signing all those documents at closing. Yes. So I definitely appreciate that. Um, I've mentioned a lot of times my video is as a realtor, I want uh, my viewers and clients to have the best information available. So that's to make this big decision. And that's why I wanted to bring you in just so they have all that information. So definitely appreciate that. Um, do you have any tips and advice for folks uh, who are getting ready to maybe buy their first home? I, I already can tell when you when you ran down the list of things you'd be asking for, you know it's coming, get those things already found. So when the lender says, hey, we need this, you don't go into complete panic. Uh, do you have any advice for those folks? Yeah, I mean, the biggest thing is people that we talk to quite often feel like they need to pay their debt off, you know, pay all my debt off before I can qualify. And that may not be the case. So mm -hmm. we look at minimum payments and the biggest place we see this is on credit cards, right? So they'll go pay their credit cards off and then close those credit cards. Closing cards is a huge mistake because you lose the history of the card. And so your credit score actually goes down. So while bringing your debt down below a 30% balance to the credit limit, that is where that is beneficial, but don't close those cards. So that's the first thing a lot of people do. Second is if they've got collections on their credit report, used to be medical. Now medical is not going to show up on credit reports unless it's over 12 months old at this point in time that just changed recently but people used to pay those correct those medical collections off thinking that was going to help their score and normally it didn't so now what we've done is we've spent money that we should have saved to use towards cash to close or closing mm -hmm. costs and so the key is talk to me before you make a lot of decisions <laughs> yes That's quite often what you're doing is not going to be the best to put you in the situation to buy Yes, uh, that's one of those advice as a realtor I give all my clients, especially if the numbers are kind of close, don't go, don't change anything. Don't get a divorce. Don't quit your job. Don't buy a new car. <laughs> don't, don't decide, hey, we're gonna have this really nice house. Let's go buy all the furniture now. Don't do any of that until after you close because people don't realize that a uh, lender is gonna run all those numbers again just a couple of days before closing and people have lost homes because they just changed their debt to income ratio by doing one of those things. So it's very important to call your lender before <laughs> doing anything. For sure. sure it's okay. For sure. Um, I uh, definitely appreciate the insight and uh, that you've given us. And uh, I, I know a lot of stuff. I really know the community and the area and the housing market. And I wanted to bring you in because I, I know my swim lane and mm -hmm. I could talk a little bit about what's going on in the market, but I always prefer, I would defer those conversations to a lender and any realtor should do that because realtors can get in trouble. We're talking about stuff that we're not experts at. So we always defer to those lenders. Um, well, that's really those questions I had for you, for my viewers. I hope you found this video informative. If you did, make sure you hit that like button and keep subscribing to my channel. I am going to put uh, Chris's uh, contact information in the description box, so you can feel free to reach out to him uh, via phone call, text, or email. One of the things I really like about Chris is he's available. He will be there to answer your questions if you have any. And... Uh, if you're looking for a real estate agent in the greater San Antonio area to include Bernie, New Braunfels, Boverde, I love helping people in the Texas Hill Country. Um, the best way to reach me is to click the link to my calendaring app in the description box also and schedule a Zoom meeting with me and uh, I'll be happy to help. But I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up and I really appreciate Chris coming on and sharing some of your expertise with my viewers. Thanks, partner. I appreciate the opportunity for sure.
All right. Take care now. Talk Thanks, to you soon. Sir. All right. Bye.